Hey, it's Ashley at Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we are going to go through a HESI review of adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, so we are going to talk about adding subtract and subtracting fractions with like denominators, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, simplifying fractions, and converting fractions to mixed numbers. Okay, um, so if that sounds like something that you need to practice, stick along with me. Uh, before we jump in, though, please check out the links in the description of this video where you will find a free HESI practice test, a free HESI boot camp, the Smart Edition HESI online course, and our HESI Facebook study group. Okay, so let's jump into it together. Okay, so let's talk about adding and subtracting fractions that have like denominators. So remember the top is the numerator and the bottom is the denominator. So the bottom is the number that we want to be the same in order to add or subtract fractions. So if you need extra review with this, make sure you check out our other video on fractions and decimals, okay, to get a jump start, and then you might wanna come back to this. So to add fractions with like denominators, all you do is just add the top and keep the bottom. So two fifths plus one fifths is just three fifths, okay? So that's like saying two fifths of a candy bar, right? Like a Hershey's bar, think about, plus one more fifth, you would have three fifths altogether, okay? So what about three eighths plus three eighths? Well. Three plus three is six, and you just keep the eight. However, sometimes we need to simplify our answer. So notice these are both even. I can divide each of these by two to get a more simplified answer. Oops. So six divided by two is three. Eight divided by two is four, so three fourths. Okay, so when we have to simplify our answer, a lot of the times for our solution on the HESI, you wanna find a common factor that you can divide the top and the bottom by to get your final answer. Four sevenths plus four sevenths, well, add four plus four, you get eight, and keep the seven, eight sevenths. So this is what we would call an improper fraction or a top-heavy fraction. The top is greater than the bottom. So you wanna convert this to a mixed number. So eight sevenths, think about that candy bar again, right? If I had a candy bar broken up into seven pieces, one whole candy bar would be seven, but if I have eight pieces, I have a little bit more than one, right? So seven goes into eight one time, so I can pull out one whole, seven sevenths, or that whole candy bar, and then I would have one seventh left over, okay? So this is the exact same if we have subtracting fractions. Let's say we do um, five six minus two sixths, right? Subtract the top, five minus two is three, and keep the bottom, three sixths, or both of these can be divided by three. So this is the same thing as one half, okay? So with like denominators, nice and easy, just add the tops and keep the denominator, or for subtraction, subtract the tops and keep that denominator. But what happens when we have an unlike denominator, when our denominators are not the same? So what we wanna do here is we wanna find the least common multiple, the LCM of our denominators. So five and 15, if you don't see, <clears throat> excuse me, if you do not see the least common multiple right away, you can always make a list, five, 10, 15, Oh, and then 15, so that actually is our least common multiple, 15. So I wanna convert these fractions into something over 15. So this one on the right, seven fifteenths will actually stay the same, but then two fifths, so you did five times three, right? One, two, three to get there. So I'm going to do two times three, which is six. So two fifths is the same thing as six fifteenths, so when I add 6 fifteenths plus 7 fifteenths, I get 13 fifteenths. So we'd like to ask ourselves, can we simplify? That's always important here is to see if we can simplify. And 13 and 15 do not have anything in common, so we are done. What would we do for 5 6 minus 3 fourths? Okay, so we need to find a least common multiple. We need to find a common denominator first. So I'll make a list, 6, 12, 18, and then this would be 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay, so here is 12 in both of our lists. 
So I'm going to convert these fractions to have the denominator of 12. So these are our equivalent fractions we can work with. 6 times 2 got me to 12, so I will do 5 times 2, which is 10. 4 times 3 got me to 12, so 3 times 3 is 9. So 10 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. 10 minus 9 is 1. And keep the denominator. Nothing to simplify here. So we are all set. Okay, so getting a common denominator in order to add or subtract is super important. Let's look at a few examples to try together today, just like you will see on the HESI exam. So 2 ninths plus 5 ninths. I have the same denominator, so I can just add the top, keep the bottom, so 7 ninths. I can't simplify, so that's my final answer. Okay, 7 ninths. Okay, let's try to add 3 tenths plus 3 tenths. So I have two fraction bars for each one, and these are broken up into 10. So if I have 3 tenths plus 3 more tenths, the fact that they have the same denominator makes it nice and easy. I can just add up the three and the three, right? So three tenths plus three tenths is six tenths. But typically we need to turn this into a simplified fraction. So six tenths, both of these are even. I can divide by two on the top and the bottom and I got three fifths as my final answer. Okay, so let's try a few subtraction problems. Five sevenths minus three sevenths. Okay, five minus three is two. Keep the denominator of seven, two sevenths. I cannot simplify that. So that's my final answer. And then again, feel free to try this one on your own. Nine tenths minus seven tenths. We would subtract the top and get two. Keep that denominator the same. And again, notice these are both even. I can divide both of these by two. And I get one over five, one fifth. Let's try an example where we do not have a common denominator. So we need to do three eighths plus five sixths. So when we define a common denominator, between eight and six is to just list the multiples. So for eight, it would be eight, 16, 24, 32, for six, six, 12, 18, 24. Okay, so we find the least common multiple by the lowest number that's in both, so 24. So I'm going to convert each of these fractions into something over 24. So three eighths is equal to well, I had to do eight times three. So three times three is nine, so nine 24 And then five six is equal to six times four was 24, so five times four is 20. Now, really what I have to do is nine over 24 plus 20 over 24, and that gives me 29 24 So now, remember, we have a top-heavy fraction we need to go and turn this into a mixed number. So 29 over 24, 24 goes into 29 once, with five left over. So one and five, 24. Hmm, so what do we do now here? We have a mixed number plus a fraction. So one and a half plus two thirds. Okay, so a couple different ways to do this. Let me show you two options. Two different ways. Whichever one works for you, that's the one that I'll want you to continue to try in the future. Okay, one and a half plus two thirds. So maybe if I turn this into a uh, into an improper fraction and then convert, I might want to do that. So one and one half is the same thing as three halves, and then plus two thirds. Find a common denominator of six. This would be times three, right? So three times three is nine. This would be times two, so this would be four. So this is 13 over 12, oh, sorry, over six. 13 six, and six goes into 13 twice, which is 12, and I have one left over. So two and one sixth would be my final answer. So first strategy might be to first turn it into a mixed number, into an improper fraction, and then find your common denominator and then solve and turn it back into a mixed number. 
Or you could think of one and one half plus two thirds and just worry about the one half plus two thirds part, right? Just worry about the fraction first. So again, we still need that common denominator of six. So this would be three sixths plus four sixths, which is seven sixths. And seven six is the same thing as one and one six, right? Six goes into seven once with one left over. But I can't forget about this one here, right? So I have one and one six, but I need to add one more to that. So that would give me two and one six as well. So either way you wanna do it, either convert it to an improper fraction first, or you can just add the fractions and then add back that whole number but just don't forget to add that whole number back, okay? So two and one sixth is our solution. Okay, so we have one more problem to try together today, or actually maybe we have a couple. Let's have a couple. So 15 sixteenths minus three eighths. Let's do some subtraction now. 15 sixteenths minus three eighths. So unlike denominators, I need common denominators. In this case, 16 would be my common denominator. So I can leave 15 sixteenths and just change 3 eighths to something over 16. 8 times 2 is 16, so 3 times 2 is 6, and then just subtract 15 minus 6 is 9 over 16, and I cannot simplify 9 sixteenths. Okay, so here we have a subtraction problem, 15 tenths minus 2 thirds. So notice that our denominators are different, so we need to find a common denominator. Something that you can do is just multiply the two denominators and that'll give you a common denominator. So 10 times three would be 30. So we are going to convert each of these fractions into something over 30. So 15 over 10 is the same thing as, well, 10 times three got me to 30. So 15 times three is 45. Two thirds is the same thing as, this was times 10. So two times 10 is 20. And when I subtract, I get 25 over 30. But when we look at 25 over 30, we have to see if there's anything that both of those numbers share, and we can divide each of those by 5. So 25 over 30 is actually the same as 5 over 6. And now we have our final answer. Okay, good luck, and come back and check us out for more review videos, and don't forget to check out those links in the description. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me.